When I saw the Black Clover mobile trailers, I thought, wow, they're making an open world Black Clover game. Nope. That's not what happened. Last week they held a closed beta and I was lucky enough to get in. Played for a few hours to get a feel for it and I'll start the video by saying this game is really well made and I don't like it. Everything you see today is not the final product, everything's subject to change, it is a beta after all. So with that in mind, let's talk about Black Clover Mobile. If you play a lot of mobile games and gotchas and came to this video wondering if this is a good one of those, don't. This is not that video. I'm mostly a console player, but I recognize that mobile games have evolved to a point where even I can enjoy them. And although I'm not the biggest fan of gacha systems, sometimes they stay away from the core gameplay systems that I enjoy. And even when they don't, if it doesn't require an insane amount of grinding or luck to progress through the story, or a very strict stamina system that stops me from playing the video game, then it's totally fine by me. If you're mostly a console player, maybe my perspective on this game is something you'll be able to relate to. But if you want to know about drop rates, pity systems, the free currency, I recommend you watch this other review by Nagato that I found extremely helpful when covering some of the stuff that I didn't even get to play. So is this an open world Black Clover game? No. Even though, after the initial tutorial and cutscenes you can free roam with Asta, what the game does give you is these very small areas with barely any incentive to explore. It's almost like they looked good in the trailers, so they made it. But this serves very little purpose gameplay-wise. The most you can do is break some barrels to find some hidden currency, but most of the time you'll just click the objective on the top right of the screen and the character will automatically walk towards the next goal. When I first got into the city, the area was a bit bigger, so I thought, great, let's explore this place. You can't even control the camera, so this ends up being very awkward to move around and look for stuff. So it's not an open world, but that's no problem. Maybe the marketing was a bit misleading, but what is the game actually all about? Because I didn't even know what the combat was like at this point. And it is a turn-based RPG. This is where the game kind of lost me. Not because it's a turn-based RPG. I liked RPGs, they're not my favorite genre, but when it's really well made or it's doing something new that I haven't seen before, I'm usually pretty engaged with it. And although I think this one is really well made, I also feel like I've played this many times before. It's not really doing anything new from what I saw. It's, well, it's another one of those, but it's much prettier. So let's break down the systems, see if any of this sounds familiar. You pick a team of four characters. On the right side of the screen, you can see whose turn it is next. Every character has a bunch of stats. One of them is speed, and that will determine who goes first once the fight starts. Each character has four abilities on the bottom right. The first one is a basic attack that you can use every turn you want to. The second one is a skill on a cooldown. And the third one is their ultimate attack, which will deplete their full special bar. So you can only use it when it's full. There's a fourth ability, which is a link attack. You will cooperate with another character for a stronger attack. And this will also spend some of that special meter, but not all of it. Meaning often you'll have to choose between throwing your ultimate attack or this link attack. Some combination attacks actually have unique animations, but most of them are just the characters doing their own specials one at a time. That said, every character seems to have really specific abilities, which is great. It makes them stand out, it makes them feel unique in a team. For instance, Rill attacks a single target and enters a counter stance. So every time he's attacked afterwards, he will automatically automatically counter the target even outside of his turn. Asta's normal attacks can remove buffs and debuffs and his skill increases his speed and attack power, encouraging you to use it at the start of a wave. And Jack's normal attack is an area attack that will hit everybody and reduce their maximum HP, so even if they get healed, they don't get healed for the full amount. And his cooldown skill focuses down a single target, applying a really strong bleed effect. So as you can see, everyone is pretty unique. Every character also has a type, they can be red, blue or green. There are type advantages, it's the the usual fire emblem triangle that you can see on the top left. On top of those types, these characters can belong to specific classes. You got supports, healers, your tanks, your damage dealers. That's the icon in the middle of the collar. So there's enough complexity here to build unique teams, enough depth to explore what works and what doesn't. That said, especially early on, your level is king. So it's probably not even gonna matter until you hit the end game. After you defeat all your enemies, the fight is not done. You simply move to the second wave. That's right, every encounter has a certain number of waves, which could could be a nice twist of the genre, but this is where I found my biggest problem with the combat system. While cooldowns and special meter will carry over between waves, if you buffed your characters in a previous wave, let's say the Asta attack buff and speed buff, those buffs will not carry over, and I think that's a huge missed opportunity. You could be doing a good job of setting up for wave 2 and wave 3, but if all your buffs are going to disappear anyway, the best you can do is to save your cooldowns, that's the only way you can prepare for the next waves. And to me, that kind of defeats the purpose of a wave-based 
system like this. That's not why I don't like the combat system, it just had a chance to do something different and kind of dropped the ball on a very basic aspect. But overall, I just found myself playing this and feeling a bit bored because I've done this many times in the past. And this game doesn't really offer enough new stuff for me to be engaged with it. There was a lot of stuff that I did enjoy though and that I would like to see in a lot more anime games. First of all, storytelling and cutscenes. This is one of the best games I've seen at recreating an anime through cutscenes. It's on the level of Full Metal Alchemist, just with a lot more cutscenes for sure. It's so good that I would often forget I was playing a mobile game because this is top quality stuff. Really good voice acting too, better than the anime, I'll say it. Those first few episodes of Black Clover were too painful to watch. Asta was just too much for me. I found it much better in game. I even like what they did with subtitles, animating them to fit the emotion of the character. That's a neat trick I haven't seen used in many anime games before. The story isn't just told through these top tier cutscenes, there are also some more visual novel style scenes with the character models appearing with text boxes underneath. These usually are not voiced, but here's something that I absolutely loved about this. When you hit the skip button, it gives you a summary of what happened on that cutscene. These dialogue scenes are usually some flavor text that doesn't really move the story forward too much, and I've played a ton of anime games they use this simply to increase playtime. And still, I usually don't skip them because I'm scared of missing something important. So having this summary for every single dialogue cutscene is genius. And I'd love to see this in more anime games. It's definitely not going to happen though. Developers don't like giving you a skip button to skip through their work. Graphics wise, it's not just the cutscenes that look great, the pull animations look really good for every single character. Their attacks, especially the ultimate attacks, are absolutely gorgeous. They put a lot of work into making this Black Clover fantasy looking good. And on the gacha side of things, they give you a free summon every day. It's not exclusive to this game, but I, I, I wish some other games did this. Genshin Impact? It's just on the standard banner. What's the harm? The gacha didn't get in the way yet, but I also didn't play a ton of it. In fact, the gacha systems broke my story progression, and that's one of the reasons why I don't like stuff like this. I was progressing through the story normally. I even died in one of the first fights. But then I pulled some characters, and the game gave me this challenge mode for me to try out. 30 minutes later, all my characters are overleveled because I play that challenge mode a bunch. That's what the challenge mode is made for, for you to level up characters, but when you're still going through the story, that means you're gonna be over leveled, and any balance the devs did for a natural story progression is just gone, and you're one-shotting everything. To me, playing through the story is more important than pulling for characters and making them stronger, but I also understand that that's not the main focus of the game. The focus is the gacha stuff, so in a way, it doesn't feel made for me. But outside of the combat critique I made, where the buffs and debuffs don't carry over between waves, like that would give combat some extra depth and always make you plan the next wave carefully. But outside of that, I really didn't find any flaws here. The game looks fantastic, seems really well made, it's just not for me. There are a ton of other systems I didn't get to see, there's a whole gear system where you slot items like it's a Resident Evil inventory system, I think that's pretty neat. Leveling up characters doesn't seem to require pulling for duplicates, because if you play with a character, your bond with them levels up, and some of those bond rewards are those duplicates you need to level them up, so you don't have to rely on the gacha to max someone out. Or at least, that's what I gathered from Nagato's video, I really like that stuff. It seems to me like this is a very good game for you guys to keep an eye on if you are into this stuff, because it seems like a really good one of those. As for me, if you want to know the kind of mobile game that makes me tick, check out the new 7 Deadly Sins. That's a game that seems to transcend mobile and taking the genre forward. That's the stuff I'm into. I'll see you guys on that video and thank you for watching.